College Football Week 13 recap brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. Samstown, First Jackpot, Hollywood, Fitz Casino, Horseshoe, Gold Strike. All awesome. We've been to all of them. They got more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. It's also brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. Let's fire this thing off. We got a lot of games to talk about this week. Uh, let's start off with the the most watched game of the regular season. Okay. Ohio State Michigan. Yep. What What did you think about this? I, I was shocked. I was just completely baffled. Every analytical way to look at this game, Michigan had the advantage at every part of the game, other than talent. Well, other than, yeah, other than, the I guess, the stars on the back of the names. Yeah. Where they were recruited. And that's about it. I mean, that's it. And they, but they, Ohio State just came out and kicked their butt. I, I want to know, is this the Ohio State team that we're going to get? Or or was this a one-time thing? Or, or was this just all complete emotion and hatred? Because they haven't looked this good in a quarter during a single game all year. No, I mean, they look, in the first three games of the year, they looked fantastic. Don't give me that. They, and that was they, under Ryan they, Day. But they played high school teams, man. They it, played exactly. TCU, Rutger, and, and Oregon State. Well, I'll what, tell you what. Please the, don't give me that. So, I I called the upset on our show last week because Urban Meyer as an underdog is straight money. Well, he's yeah, always he's been only, straight money. He's only been the underdog like nine times this is, his life. Yeah, and it's uh, five times at Ohio State now. Yeah. But and never a home underdog. Yeah, never a home underdog, which is ever crazy to think about. But uh but aside from that, this situation, if you go back and look at Michigan's schedule, they had not played anybody with near the offensive explosion capabilities that Ohio State has. Michigan's defense is plotting and kind of slow, but their biggest thing is they get pressure on quarterbacks. With Ohio State's offense, right. they've got that quick release. They threw the, the ball the slant in like plat. two seconds. Yes. If you don't give the linemen a chance to get yeah. home, then they have no way to slow you down. Like, calling the upsets one thing. Like, oh, I could have easily seen Ohio State winning this oh, game. I, I never would have seen them the, the complete, putting up 62. The complete thrashing and is the, and they could shocking. They really probably should have put up over 70. I mean, they, they should have scored more. Yeah. And, and you know what's even crazier than that? Their time of possession. Ohio State only had the ball for 24 minutes. Well, that's because they scored in seconds. Oh, yeah. I mean, seconds. Oh, but that's that's what's nuts. So, Dwayne Haskins was 20 out of 31, 396 yards, six touchdowns. Michigan, Michigan had only given up seven touchdowns this. passing the all year. The whole season, they gave up seven. They and gave then, up six in one game. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the question now is, where it, does Ohio State rank? In, where does Michigan end up ranked? Well, I'm not worried about either of those two things. What do we think about this? Like, is is this real? It, well, is is it good enough to make the committee forget about the rest of the, the season. crap season? Because other than those three games you pointed out that were against dog teams, they hadn't looked good against anybody. No, e even in win, like no, even they, the wins they they beat Penn State, who barely, is a three loss team, but they barely. beat them by one, and they were down by. Two touchdowns Correct. in the fourth quarter. They they barely scrape a win against Maryland. They barely scrape out a win against Minnesota. They barely scrape out a win against Nebraska. I mean, these are bad teams. Yeah, these are bad teams. They're kind of letting hang around all the time. This is this is an anomaly that I yeah. think something happens with emotion. And and so let's say they go into the the Northwestern Championship game and they just kick their butt. Does that mean anything? Does that tell us no, anything? Do no. we learn anything? Uh, at the Massey Composite, here, I actually did up the Massey Composite. Um, Northwestern is... 32? 32. 32, yeah, number 32. So, no. I mean, that's... Like, that it doesn't do anything, because Texas is 21, and they're playing Oklahoma. So, no, I, I don't think so. Like, I think what this really sets up is... Like if Alabama loses to Georgia, well, no, that's no. If Alabama loses to Georgia, we have our four. Yeah, 
and it's easy. The, the problem that we're going to run into is if Alabama wins, which everyone assumes they will. And then you've and got Oklahoma and Ohio State. State. You've got a two-loss Georgia team that one of those losses is to Bama. You have Oklahoma, who kind of has done the same thing. They look bad against bad teams. They have a loss. But, it, but if they beat Texas, great. then they erase the loss. I don't know. That it was only by three. Loss. Because if they lose to Texas, Texas is going to be a top 10 team. Well, or if they that. beat Texas, then Texas will still be like 15. Yeah, okay. You know, so like. But Texas isn't going to be as good as Michigan. And then you've got UCF sitting there saying, we haven't lost anybody. Well, that's. Pending, pending so they beat Memphis. I was going to bring that up like, uh, like later then, on. So, so you've got. So you've got. It, well, if we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. What, what do you do? With that four spot, you've got a team that everyone says, well, they haven't played anybody, but they also haven't lost anybody, and they have some big wins on their season. Okay. You you have two teams with the exact same resume, or Ohio State probably has bigger wins. The win over Michigan is a bigger win. The win over Penn State is a bigger win yeah. than, let's say, West Virginia and Texas, if they have to beat Texas to do that. Their loss is worse. I always like – please don't think I'm showing favoritism because there are – there's only one team that I despise more than these two teams. And and so I I would value wins over losses. And I, if that's the case, then you got to go with Ohio State. I would give it to Ohio State because I think it's more important to beat good teams than – than to say, well, you got killed by a bad team and you got your only loss is to a good team. Well, you you know which way I think the committee's going to go on this. No, I don't. Uh, it will be Ohio State all day, every day. Oh. Ohio well, State why, has... Why do you think that? Ohio State has six of the top, like, 18 most watched games in college football this season. And I know that, again, I'm not that say shouldn't they, matter. I'm not going to say they don't deserve the spot, but if they get it because of that, I'm... That's what? the kind of stuff that pisses me off. We're talking about playing for a championship. If you're going to make the decision on who gets in because of who's watching the games, then we need to take the word championship out of this. We really, really do. Give this me, is no longer a championship. Give me – because they they can make up excuses for any of these I teams. I know. They can, like you can justify Oklahoma, it. Oklahoma, we can want. say, well, they don't belong in, even though they're 12-1 and one, and they – negated their only loss because they beat the crap out of the That's team, right. whatever. They can talk about how good that is, or they can say, eh, but they've got, and currently right now, I believe it's number 103 in the country in yards per play defense. Like, well, they're number 11, bad. 111th in the country of total defense. In total defense. 111. So, yeah. And that's... The the other, like, four teams, three teams, I guess, are all in the top 25. Well, if you count Georgia, yeah, that's they're on the yeah, top Georgia's twenty-five. Top, but even if you uh, take Georgia out, the other three, they're all in the top twenty-five. Alabama, Clemson, and Notre Dame are all top ten. Yes. So, so, so the difference between one eleven and those guys, pretty drastic. Now yeah. their offense is good, but but I've been saying this all year. I I think UCF's offense is pretty damn good too. Oh yeah. And so if we're gonna look at one side of the ball and how we're gonna judge these teams. I'm going to say you I real and I know that people look at schedules and they yell and they scream. Look at how these two teams are made up. Please tell me that UCF is not a whole lot better than Oklahoma. Cuz cuz they're the same damn team. Yeah. They're literally the same team. Now I don't like I don't know how much better UCF is without Mackenzie Milton, but you look at the resume, not what you think they can do. Uh, well, agreed. But if you're looking at resume, even still, I don't know that it's as strong as Oklahoma's. But it's not way. as strong. Oklahoma's obviously played better competition, but they've got a loss. We, man, we have skipped all over the place. On this. Well, <laughs> let's let's jump into. Let's go on and talk about the seven overtimes. I know you don't want to. No, I don't. But, I don't really but by want God, to at all. it was huge. It was probably the most entertaining football game of the entire season. Yep. Um, seven overtimes. Should have been eight. Probably never should, should have been an overtime. Should, should, should have been zero. Um, the stats are pointless in this one. I know that they'll talk about 146 points, most ever in foot. Like, it, it, blah, get out of here with that. Uh, the refs butchered this. They 100% butchered this. Uh, the knee down on the interception, 
with what like a minute left in the game or whatever that was a ludicrous call just ridiculous Let- and i understand that if you go back and you look at it and whatnot like okay his knee touched but i don't know that he had established possession at that point but either way even let's give him that one i'm gonna give, give him, that, him one. that one because let's just assume all right so that's a that's a touch touch play we all right can give let's him go one. to the fourth and 18 pass okay with what 20 seconds left correct how do you not measure? How do you how do you just immediately because well, and, where and knowing, his, knowing the spot the spot is just and you I understand can watch the, the game spot the, was wrong. The spot is bad. Yes, the the line that's on the field is wrong, but, but the even spot still, that the guy put it down is wrong. It was uh, it was a whole yard yeah, it, further than right. than it, where the guy actually went not, down. It's not close. Yeah, it was absolutely, and they they never measured. They nope. never questioned. Nope. Now, at that point, LSU had a timeout, right? So they could have called a timeout, which... I don't remember now. I, either way, it's supposed to be reviewed. I'm not, I'm, not a fan, I'm not a fan of making the other team call the timeout or saying they shouldn't have to get something like that. And, and my justification for it is the, the, the Patriots-Seahawks Super Bowl. I know that's the NFL. But the Marshawn Lynch running it in, and Bill, everyone was like, why is Bill not calling a timeout? If you think the other team is more discombobulated than your team, yeah. then you don't let them off the hook by calling the timeout. You let you let the game play out, and, and if the officials miss something, you can't say, well, you should have called timeout. Well, no, yeah, because no, no, if no, I I've... call timeout, now I've given them an opportunity to draw up the best play that they can draw up, right. and I've got a more difficult situation to stop them when I think I can stop them this way, it, it re- looked, regardless of if it works or not, it doesn't matter. It looked to me like LSU just completely accepted that he got the first down. Like mm. nobody freaked out. I, I, don't know, everybody I, don't, just, I don't know that there's an acceptance, but I also don't know that anybody on that sidelines had a good enough view to know if it was right or wrong. Uh, d- yeah, I mean, because it, when you're we have the, the benefit of seeing of it from seeing a it. bird's eye view from a camera, yeah, and they're on the sidelines with people running at weird angles to them. I don't know that they and, can, and see and they're it. having to speed up and whatnot. So as soon as they call a first down, it's just there's no reason for it to they're not, moving the chain. not have been measured. If it's measured, then somebody in a booth upstairs at LSU can say, "Hey." We need to see if we can get a review for this or whatever. We've seen replays and we think it's wrong, but if they don't stop it to measure it, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Um, let's see. So with one second left, are you sure? That's are, all right. Are you, so are you sure about that? So I I went back because I had this DVR. Which by the way, game time was like five hours and forty seven minutes. Well, I mean, when you go seven overtimes, and every overtime... You got commercials they, they and stop all the that. I know. Reset. It's all a big deal. But it's, it's, like a it's, still, it's still crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, but five hours, 47 minutes. That's a long football game. Uh, but I, I had this DVR. I went back and watched the one second left thing yep. over and over and over. And it... Yes, there was, when, when the ball hit, yes... There was still one second left on the clock, but they did not start the clock correctly when they got the ball set. Like, that part absolutely astounded me. It didn't astound me at all. Like, it just, like, they the clock operator never started it once it was set. And yes, yes, you can get a... a clock off with three seconds left like that is doable but I mean everything's got to be and then the the illegal formation that wasn't called to get one of those uh I mean it, it just and then uh, the, yeah. the the easy thing to do is to say well the LSU just should have stopped them but when all of these things have happened so quickly that defense is just gassed it's just gassed I mean that's just what it was yeah Neither, um, neither defense had any legs to stand on at the end of that game. Well, and the, they so, were all just exhausted. Well, let's let's keep it going. The interception, or not interception, the um, the incomplete pass in the first overtime that was was actually a fumble, but they ruled an incomplete pass. Yep. You are taught as an official 
to like let the call, play run. Yep, call it, yeah. and then you go review it. That's right. Get it right. Do the thing that you can undo, not do the thing that you can't undo. Right, and and that was a hundred percent a fumble. That that guy had possession and established it, and then lost the ball. And Grady Williams picked it up. Correct. That was the end of the game. That's it. I don't know. So saying. look. So so I. I I know we're running long. But no, I don't. But it, I, this no, is just a, a crazy game. Look, this, look, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to, I'm going to say this here. I was going to say his, I his believe, views are I, different from my views. I believe this. We'll just go from that. And and you can call me a sore loser. You can call me whatever you want. That's fine. But, That's I'm going to let you say whatever I'm, you want. But I'm going to tell you this. You you damn sure not going to say I'm wrong. You you can call me a lot of names, but I won't be wrong. Greg Sankey is a small and petty individual. He might be the worst commissioner of all the commissioners in college football. That's saying something, by the way, Pac-12. Y'all suck some pretty bad balls, too. <laughs> anyway, this guy, That's as soon Larry, as— Larry Scott, for those that don't know. As soon as LSU attacked Greg Sankey specifically for the Alabama shenanigans and favoritism and exposed him for, for being the leech that he is that attaches himself to a big bully— Immediately, I knew LSU's fate is sealed because in college football, it is the one thing that I, it, one of the many things I don't understand about the sport that makes billions, billions with a B dollars, does not pay its labor and somehow lets every individual conference have their own commissioners or have their own uh, uh, referees and, and they all play by different rules. And so, therefore, in the SEC, Greg Sankey gets to say, hey, any big game that's a close game, those boys down there, they don't get a call. They don't get the call. And that's going to happen as long as the reign of Sankey lasts. Mark my words, four or five years from now, if he is still there, that will be the case. You can say I'm a sore loser. You can say it's sour grapes, but the tape does not lie. The officiating in the SEC is bad. It's really bad on the surface. But if it was just they suck at their job bad, at some point in time, it would even out. At some point in time, a call would go the other way because they're just bad at their job randomly. My child doesn't know left from right. So when she puts her shoes on, about 40, 50 percent of the time, she puts them on the wrong feet. When she puts them on the right feet, it's not because she did anything right. It just just randomly happened that she got it right that time. (laughs) For them to be that bad in a crucial moment of the game from the next two and a half hours, the end of regulation until the end of the game. Yeah. You cannot tell me, well, that's just bad officiating. They're just not good at their job. Well, and it, and it felt like at the there end of the game. Because there would have been multiple like, times for them to screw up to have it go LSU's way, and it, they didn't make those mistakes. It never went that way. Uh, that's at my, the, that's at the my end thought. Of, and and nobody will convince me otherwise because there's no there's no way. At the end of the seventh overtime, the pass interference call made it seem like they were just ready to get out. Like it, it felt like the referees were but they just they sure weren't ready to let it get out for for LSU, LSU to win it. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna end this game now and we're gonna make sure we get the outcome we need. Yeah, the the pass interference call on that last two point conversion that resulted in the uh, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on Greedy Williams, all that kind of stuff. Like, that that ball was completely uncatchable. There should have never been a flag. Like, that was – and it, it would have gone to an eighth overtime, at which point LSU gets the ball last. You never know what's going to happen. We want to talk about Jimbo's nephew punching a, uh, an old man in the pacemaker. I didn't even bring that up. And, but, then, and, then, but, yeah. and then him having the fortune – it was Damian that, Craig that that, that started that all Marshall this. Falk, one of the great Patriots of all time and great LSU Tigers of all time, did not destroy that man and take his life. He yeah. just he just grabbed him because if if he wanted to, he he could he'd have, have, he'd have, he took could him have down. torn him apart. I do agree with that. That that, that boy, was the that young man thing. was lucky. I don't have the uh, the egg bowl on here as a recap <laughs> because like what's the purpose? But if we're gonna talk about fights. Uh, had some fights. That kid for Ole Miss, Matt. He, what's his name? Matt Coral. Oh, Matt, I, I, I didn't listen with the man. well, the quarterback for Ole Miss. Yeah. Like okay, yeah. But what's his name? Matt 
Matt Corral, Matt Coral. Yeah. I didn't listen with the sound on, so I, I don't know exactly how to say his name. Um, but man, like the fact that he did not get thrown out of that game, kind of blows my mind. I I, I can't. Like he, I, I, we everybody knew that he was trouble even before he went down there because of his past legal issues. What What do you think but, of the whew. the entire teams on both sides getting unsportsmanlike conduct? I with that I I had a feeling that was going to happen. Like I, I don't, I've never seen it happen before, but it looked like it probably needed to happen. I like that state state had a backup kicker that was like that's my first unsportsmanlike conduct ever. Like, I don't, <laughs> like do I wear this with a badge of pride or? Or am I am I shamed? Uh, have I shamed my family? I think uh, I. It, I'll, I'll say this. Either way, it was it was pretty entertaining having Mississippi State's band play Baby Shark in the fourth quarter. That is one of the better troll jobs yeah. of the season. Um, and then the referees taking that touchdown off the board that actually caused the whole fight. Like them taking that touchdown off the board after the fight was. Pretty comical. Yeah, that, I I don't know. I, I don't. Was, I don't. When we get into some now, I hate of those it, things, I hate it for Ole Miss. I don't but, know all whew. the rules and and why that would have came off the board. But anyway, well, it's, it it did not, or it came off the board because the kid didn't get the playoff before the end of the third quarter, like the clock ran out. Oh, okay, okay, I yeah. got you now. I got so you. clock ran out on that one. It was uh, it was insane to see. It was just nuts. Uh, game number three that I've got on here. Number three. <laughs> number right? three. Oklahoma 59, West Virginia 56. I, I had a feeling this was going to come down to who gets the ball last. West Virginia 704 yards and lost, lost the game. The game. Uh, Oklahoma you. 668 yards. It was 1,372 yards of total offense. Check this out. In the first quarter, there were four touchdowns. Second quarter, there were five touchdowns. The third quarter, there were four touchdowns and a field goal. And in the fourth, they finally ran out of gas and only scored three. And West Virginia scored two of those. Had Will Greer not fumbled yep. twice, which led directly two points, we have. West Virginia wins this ballgame. Oh, no doubt. No no question, because Oklahoma could stop anybody. Will Greer had to, had to put the ball on the ground. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's it. This is, this is what you get when you get Oklahoma, and I'm not saying it's bad TV, okay? That's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, a lot of people give me crap for beating up on Oklahoma. I'm just saying you're really good at offense. As good as you are at offense, you might be equally as bad on defense. Yeah. That does not make a great team. No. You it, play any team that can slow you down at all. LSU is a mediocre offense. Mediocre might be nice. It might be mean to some people. But we're a mediocre offense. LSU There's no put doubt 40 on we're Oklahoma. putting 40 on Oklahoma. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. Oklahoma probably hang 40 on us, but I don't I don't know that they will. Yeah. I mean, I— I would assume that they would because they have on on everybody. They have on it, but they hadn't but, played any defenses, Gary. Oh, not no, not this season. I mean, no. name one team in the top fifty defenses that they play. Is Texas in the top fifty? Yeah, yeah, Texas top fifty, but it's right. but they're you other know, than in Texas. The 40s. Is anybody else in the top fifty? Iowa State. They are now. Oh, Iowa State would be now. They would yeah. be now. Um, okay, but even then, the I mean, Iowa State okay, game, I would Iowa State held them to thirty seven points. Yeah, so you I know mean, that's just anyway. Either way, uh, nice. next one up, Apple Cup. Same time, same night, different channel, in the snow, Washington 28, Washington State 13. Washington State only had 237 yards. It's, it's almost like Washington mixed with snow is complete kryptonite for the air raid. Is Mike Leach going to leave the north because of this? Uh, No. I this mean, all, I think he likes it up there. Doesn't, I mean, it doesn't work in the cold. Well, no, it works in the, in the cold. cold. It didn't work in, it didn't work in the snow, and it didn't work against Washington. Can because you go to it an indoor, Is there, like, many indoor college football teams? There aren't, are there? I think, like, Central Michigan, maybe? Or? Well, I mean, Syracuse used to play in the yeah, No, still Syracuse play. still they plays indoors, but they don't every game. No, that's the problem. But you've already got a, a coach that runs oh, no, that D crazy yeah, system. Yeah, Baber's not so. going anywhere. But I'm just trying to think of, is there some place he can play all his home games indoors? The Indianapolis Colts. Oh. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine him oh. in, in the NFL I, right now? No, no. I would love him in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, game love. number, oh, uh, uh, Washington had 487 yards of total offense. 258 yards rushing. It was 5.9 per carry. The player of the game in the Apple Cup was Miles Gaskin. Yep, I'll, I'll agree with that. Twenty-seven rushes, one hundred seventy yards, three touchdowns. Who he was? Uh, that snow didn't slow him down. I, I'm I'm gonna say this. I was I was very dis. This game beat me twice. I spent an entire day 
Okay, this is a hard day. I spent an entire day <laughs> at Disney World. All right, I walked nine point eight miles that day. We get back to the room. Everybody's passed out. I shower. I sit on the bed. I'm watching the Apple Cup. All right, and I'm up for the whole thing. Five a.m. the next morning, my wife is up saying, "We gotta go. We gotta go." <laughs> You're like, I and shouldn't I'm, have stayed up to watch and this I'm, crap. I'm, I'm reg- it, yeah, it, knowing the outcome and seeing what all happened, I was just like, oh, Leach, you beat me twice. That's, uh, he'll do that to you sometimes. He, it, was, it, was, it was a rough day the next day. It feels like every Apple Cup. At least it wasn't a 9.30 game. You know, it was, it was I, 8.30 I, I, your I do time. have to say, when, when I, if, if I ever had the power to take over the world, I'm completely doing away with the East Coast time. Eastern Standard Time is the dumbest single thing we do in our country. Yeah, because everything is really, really late. Really late. The both trips I took to Boston, I was like, "When does football come on?" I've eaten breakfast. I've like half of my day is done, and the NFL hadn't started yet. What are we doing? It starts at one o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah. No. No. Right, so anyway, Notre Dame twenty four, USC seventeen. USC led this game ten to nothing until there was two minutes and twenty one seconds left in the second quarter, and then from there, Notre Dame scored twenty four straight points, gave up a garbage time touchdown. Ian Book twenty two out of thirty nine, three hundred fifty two yards, two touchdowns, one pick. They did what they were supposed to do. They just, won the game. They got by. They won the game. Um, had they not given up the garbage touchdown, they would have covered. I, I think Ian Book looked really good. The first part of the game, their offense struggled. When he got that first first down, running the ball, it was like third and 11. And that's when it started. Then he got another first down. It was like third and nine or third and 10, something like that. It, running the football. Completely rejuvenated hits. the offense. Man, those guys were like, we're on his back. Yeah. He, he impressed me. The, they didn't play great as a team. That was the biggest leader move. Well, of, all of, of their the scoring day. came from two minutes, 21 seconds left in the second quarter right. until like 9.50 <laughs> left in the fourth. That's right. So it was basically in a quarter in, a, in about 18 minutes. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Or no, I guess not a that quarter point, and a half, but like a. It, it'd be a little bit tw- more than a 20 long. minutes, whatever. That's right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's all they needed to be able to beat USC. Is it weird that Clay Helton, and, and we talked about doing some. We're going to do a separate video about coaching changes and, Clay and non-changes. Clay kept his job because of a moral victory? I don't think it was because of a moral victory. I think really? it was because, because of— Because they didn't win the game. No, no, they, they still didn't lost win. the game. I think it was because but of— they played him close. He kept his job because of all of the uh, <laughs> instability in the past. Okay. You can't, you can't change coaches every two, three years. Like it just it okay. it won't work, but it but if you got the wrong guy in there, you probably still need to make. The, but either way, anyway, okay, either way. we'll get into that later. I just thought that was weird. Number six, UCF thirty eight, South Florida ten, and tell, then at, tell me it, in the same wrong. in the same thing here, Memphis fifty two, Houston thirty one. I now I do this. I I knew that was gonna happen. McKenzie Milton out with a leg injury, and it was about as gruesome as it gets. It yep. was so bad they wouldn't even show the replay, and they shouldn't. And they should not have. You want to watch it? Watch it on YouTube. I, I saw it live, and it was bad, Real awful, bad. Real bad. Uh, and it it might be a career ender. They had reports afterwards that he had dislocated his knee. It looked like everything had gotten no. shredded. Yeah, everything uh, from the knee down. But it dis it dislocated his knee, which cut off circulation under it. He almost lost his leg. Like that is it. You remember the Teddy Bridgewater? Uh, I mean, yeah. it's the same thing. Where just the whole thing just blew up. Yep. Um, USF's two backup quarterbacks were atrocious. Without Blake Barnett, that whole thing just blew up, and and they could not do anything. Um, Memphis ran for 401 yards on Houston. Memphis did what Memphis does. Yeah. They run the football down your throat. That's And this year, they do that. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Now, well, that's because the they past, don't have a quarterback yeah, to throw it down your The throat. past few years, like when they tried to throw it, Brady White threw two picks, and one of them was a pick six that actually gave Houston a lead at the at the half. Like things went crazy, and then in the second half they said, "Forget this crap." And I understand Ed Oliver went out, but in the first half they were not as dedicated to the run as they were in the second half. I I'll give you a number, okay, to look at for this coming week. UCF number one hundred and nine against the run. They give up 211.64 yards rushing per game. 
Just something to kind of keep an eye on. Well, UCF's going to give up points. I mean, other than South Florida, they've given up points to everybody. It's just going to be, can the new quarterback come in and play? Yep, it is. It, I, we'll, I have, we'll see. I have, a, I have a problem with the with the injury. A, it's tragic that it happened. I mean, it, not not all injuries are tragic because this is this is a game. It's in people's lives. And yeah. if you blow a shoulder and you have to have rotator cuff surgery and then you have to be an accountant the rest of your life, like – it's not now, the football end of, still gave you it, an it's, opportunity. Yeah, to, it's, it's not the end yeah. of the world. This kid, this kid's been the best football player in college football for the last two years. Nobody, nobody on ESPN or or Fox or, or any of the people that cover college football have talked about him at all. At all. Well, let's the, not say at all. They no, they have no, talked about that's, him, that's but all bull crap. But not nearly as much as they, they, other guys. The the only time they bring up Central Florida is when they want to criticize them for their schedule, which they cannot control, and they dog them. They don't give them any credit for any of the stuff that they've done at all. And now that this kid has blown his leg to a point where there's a chance he might not walk again, he definitely won't walk right again, all of a sudden there's no doubt over this week and the week after we're going to see all these puff pieces on him. And, and all of this fluff about how great he was for the game and how tragic this is, and they're going to glamorize his career, all of that should have been happening for the last two seasons when he was putting up the numbers that he was, beating teams like Auburn when he had an opportunity to play them instead of saying, oh, well, Auburn didn't really want to be there, so it didn't matter, and he didn't play anybody else. It, all of that is bullshit. It's all bullshit. And now you want to puff him up? It's too late. It's absolutely too late. Shame on shame on the people that cover the sport. They do could, it for a yeah. living. I could I can roll with that. You have a job, I, I have I a job. See, we I, do this for fun and we talk gambling. We don't really talk specifics on individuals. That guy deserved pieces before he blew his leg out on national TV. Yeah, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. He he deserved more national recognition than he got. Uh number seven, Florida fourteen or sorry, forty one, Florida State fourteen. <laughs> oh, say. that was way backwards. Yep. Way backwards. Yeah, that's all. Florida, 536 yards of total offense. Florida State, 291. Florida State had three turnovers. Florida had zero. Felipe Franks, 16 out of 26, 254 yards, three touchdowns. Florida had 282 yards rushing. They just completely dominated this well, game. They did whatever, but, but everybody's done that against Florida State. Agreed, I agreed. Mean, and, I mean, but I thought that Florida State, played them. I thought Florida State would, would put up a fight, and only because... They went out and beat Boston College the week before. Yeah, but BC still doesn't have a quarterback, and which I is mean, crazy because so like we we talked so highly of Anthony Brown early in the year. Uh, BC was seven and two with Clemson coming to town, and everybody thought uh, they might maybe have a shot. Nah, but when uh, but man, once he went down, he went down and it's different. I mean, it's, and, and, and yeah, that, but, but he's been way, back for the last two weeks. But when they play man, that style of an offense, if if he's not perfect, it's. I mean, yeah. we've talked about that in the past, right? Oh, yeah. Like, that's an offense that they can beat anybody by 20, but they can get beat by 40. Because yeah. if it's not working, then it just don't work. Now, you're and right that, about like, that. Like, that's what happened when they went to Purdue, right? Yeah. Like, like it just wasn't working that day. They're it's, not it's what really, happened against Syracuse on yeah, Saturday. You know, you know in the first quarter where you are in that game and where you're not. And that's just, yeah. the, way, that's just the way they play. And it's tough. It sucks, but... Well, that's it. that that brings up another team. Okay. Vandy 38, Tennessee 13. Oh god, I couldn't believe this. A line. battle for a bowl game. Tennessee play with no heart. It just it, so I understand Guarantano like didn't look right, right? And and he was injured, he was out the week before um when they got smoked by Missouri. Probably should not have played in this one. He was like 12 out of 29, had like two picks, one touchdown, like didn't look good. Um, I mean, this was a beat down time of possession here. Vanderbilt held the football for the 43 minutes. 78 plays for 467 yards for Vandy. 47 plays for 242 yards for Tennessee. It was a beat down. And now Vanderbilt is bowling for the second time in three years. Is Derek Mason a good coach? I think he's a good coach. I yeah, think he's I all mean, right. No, if you're doing that at Tennessee, you're a good coach. All right, at Vanderbilt. Here's what's crazy, though. I mean, the Tennessee, okay, so let's say you don't win the game. That's fine. The guys on Tennessee's defense, there's still a lot of four stars there. Like talent-wise, yeah. on paper, you're a lot better than the 
than the guys in Vanderbilt. I don't, I can't get how they just play with no pride at all. They just have no sense of urgency or like this is important at all. What what are we doing? Yeah, it, it like you're you're playing for a chance to go to a bowl game and, and for a, a chance to not a lose deal. to Vanderbilt, your in-state rival for three, three straight. I was going to say three years running. Yeah, I mean it's like that. that it's a state championship, man. This matters. Yeah. Um, speaking of the state championship, and and maybe not playing with pride, maybe a little bit. Alabama 52, Auburn 21. Uh, the, the big number, Tua 25 out of 32, 324 yards, five touchdowns. He had four rushes, 26 yards, and one touchdown. So six touchdowns, that is an Iron Bowl record. Um, did it surprise you? And I, I don't guess you watched any of this, did you? No, I saw a lot of this at the bar. Okay. I was at so, the airport. I mean, I'm, I don't get any sound, and it was on when, like, three other games were on. So the fourth quarter, TV. fourth quarter, Auburn – is already running clock when it is forty-five to twenty-one, and I understand it's that's, it's twenty-four that, points. That's but but game. Auburn is running clock. Now, yeah, this ball game. That's this ball game. It it just it surprised I mean, me isn't that the best they, defense to keep two on the sidelines. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, mean you're not going to win this game scoring fast and letting him come back. I mean, it it. Surprised me that they not come back, but come back on. Well, the they field. they threw in the towel when when Tua was already. Uh, I mean, there was there was still almost a whole quarter of football left. It doesn't matter. It just it it, matter. it just he, surprised me. He just knew he couldn't win. That's fine. Like I don't. That doesn't bother me at all. They fought like hell in the first quarter. They kept it really close. They scored with them pound for pound early, and then Bama does what Bama does. They're better than everybody else, and it, they pull away. And as soon as they started pulling away, you just like, like just don't get anybody else yeah, hurt. And let's no, yeah, just get let's out of here. let's just get out of here. Nobody's winning this game, and we fought like hell and we kept it close for a while. As soon as we realized it just doesn't matter, then yeah, let's let's play smart. Let's let's run some things that we think we can run, and let's you know do what we got to do. And you know, if something crazy happens, the ball bounces our way. Good, we never quit fighting, but we don't. Yeah, you can't just come out chunk it three times go three and out then and they, then hang, give then they the hang 100 up yeah now i guess i, I see i see your point that I just, doesn't concern me anybody losing to alabama and if you fight like hell early and then it just gets away from you like i don't i don't fault anything that happens after that as long as nobody got hurt yeah like i just think that's fine like this is this uh, yeah, is the, in the best in the fourth team quarter, in football and it's not close in the fourth quarter auburn lost their uh their one of their starting tackles yeah Oh yeah, and no. at that point it was like, Call oh, okay, off. we're done. Um, game that probably should have been called off earlier than it was. Minnesota thirty-seven, Wisconsin fifteen. What has happened to I the Badgers? I don't know. Minnesota don't know only had to throw the ball sixteen times this game. They were nine out of sixteen for one hundred twenty-four yards. They had forty-seven rushes for two hundred one yards rushing. Wisconsin had thirty-one rushes for one hundred seventy yards. Here was the difference in the game. Alex Hornibrook. Three interceptions, one fumble, which led to 24 points for Minnesota. So so two teams I liked before the season started a lot were TCU in, in Wisconsin. And and I like those teams every year. This is not a, oh, I like them this year. They're, they're two teams that I root for. They're coaches that I like, programs that I follow. TCU strictly because of Gary Patterson. Wisconsin, no matter who their coach is, I've loved them my entire life. Both of those teams were just historically bad this year, and they both did things they have never done in the years of me watching them, which is they have to be minus 25 in the turnover range. Yeah, it was, I mean, on the season, it has to be, like, in the history of programs, bad. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's it's got to be. Because Wisconsin has never been the team that tur- they run the ball, ball control, keep the ball away from you, play good defense, and don't turn the ball over, and they get opportunistic takeaways. TCU, sometimes they'll run it. Sometimes they have high-powered offenses. They always have a pretty good defense, but they don't turn the ball over. Both of these teams just giving it away, man. Yeah. I mean, they're just just handing it out like they're running for mayor. And can you? And I don't have this on here. Speaking of TCU, they beat Oklahoma State they, they this beat, week. I 
Well, and and, and that defense man. came back I know. and, and they gave up. Good. They gave up three points in the first they look, half. They look good. They look good. I just yeah, that's just Gary Patterson saying we're gonna we're gonna win this game. And I'm we going my, to a bowl game. I'm putting my foot down. We have never not gone to a bowl game with me here. It ain't starting now. That's a Big Twelve's got a a lot of six and sixteen. A whole lot of six and sixteen. None of them are really good, by the way. No, not not in the slightest. I think thing. Oklahoma's good. I don't know if Texas is good. I don't know if West Virginia is good. I like watching West Virginia, but I don't know if they're good. And and even then, like I, I like Iowa State. I don't think they're good, but I I like. Them I think a they're lot. good. I just don't think they're well, like great. I'm ta- when I say I'm good, I'm talking like top ten good. Like, no, 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 they ain't top ten good. They, they might they're, be top twenty five. They're, the, they're the team I like the most, other than Gary Patterson. Boise State thirty three, Utah State twenty four. Another one of those where time of possession was completely lopsided. 42 minutes for Boise, 18 minutes for Utah State. Uh, the difference here, Boise State had 509 yards total offense. Utah State had 425 with only having the ball for 18 minutes. They scored quick, but the difference here was a Utah State interception in the first quarter led to a touchdown for Boise. A fourth down stop at their own 34 led to a second quarter touchdown for Boise State. And that was the game. They got two extra possessions, and that's how it ended. Yep, and both of them led to touchdowns. I like this Boise team. I'm I'm really excited for the Fresno rematch. I think I think that game's going to be a lot. I'm really, now the now first you, game was really exciting. You know how I feel about rematches. I always heavily favor the team that lost. Yeah, I think we saw them. We got their best punch. We know all their moves. Let's play them again. I just think historically it works out. I I might be dead wrong. Somebody could do the research on it. You play two same team twice in a season in college football, and and you know it works out fifty fifty, and it doesn't really matter. I I think I remember the teams that won the first time usually lose the second time, and and oftentimes in glorious fashion. Now, so in two thousand eleven, I remember LSU and Alabama played twice. But in 1999 is and, – and these are just the two off the top of my head because I remember them. Well, the Auburn-Georgia game last year. Yep. All right, so there was that one that went the complete opposite direction. Complete opposite. Uh, Alabama beat It, it doesn't happen Florida. often, by the in, way. In 99, Alabama loses at home to Louisiana Tech. And, I mean, it, last second Hail Mary, whatever. The next week goes to the Swamp and beats a top-five Florida team – that Steve Spurrier had like a 30-something game-winning streak at home, beat them like 40-39 to 39 behind Sean Alexander, and then they get to the SEC championship game and play again, and Alabama beat them like 34-7. to seven. I mean, it like Bama destroyed them. Like I said, the numbers, so, so the numbers there are, might not back me up on No, this. I think the numbers probably do back you up, but there are instances, like would it surprise you if Texas beats Oklahoma again? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't think that surprised me at all. I, for some reason, I just... I, I think the matchup. I thought Herman was going to be a just home run hire coach. And he might still be. Man, I'll tell you what, he, he has completely shifted the, uh, no, the traje- uh, trajectory no, of that program did, already. Uh, yes, no, he has done a phenomenal job there. Maybe it's just all the Zach Smith bullcrap. I just find him hard to take serious right now. I can understand that. You you did see that he's bringing in David Beatty, like the former Kansas coach, to help him game plan for Oklahoma. No, that's I mean in Oklahoma or uh, uh, sorry Kansas averaged like over nine, almost ten yards a carry against Oklahoma. I don't know that I like bringing in new coaches in the middle of the season either. I yeah, I think it's a little strange. It's, oh, like, it's hey, a little chicanery there. Like no. yeah, you, you boys already beat them once. Like do you have to go I bring in like. even even if it's like like irrelevant. Like let's let's say he's bringing in you know a Joe Schmo that's just like a buddy of his that got fired from Toledo or whatever. Yeah, you know like eh, come on man. Like let let's let's dance with the girl that got you here, and then next year if you want to hire that guy, let's do that. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I don't, I don't like this. Finally, last one, Clemson 56, South Carolina 35. This game was 49-21, to 21, Clemson, with 10 minutes left. It, it was never in doubt. Um, however, Clemson got 744 yards total offense. South Carolina had six. This was a Big 12 game. Jake yeah. Bentley, 
32 out of 50, 510 yards, five touchdowns, one pick. South Carolina only had 90 yards rushing in this game. Yep. They didn't need them. No, they didn't need them. They did. They did. They hung well with Clemson, con- considering the difference in talent and in the gap there. I, d- I don't know that. I don't know that Clemson did any favors by scoring at the very end of the game when they could have with what it. like nine seconds well, left. Yeah, or whatever. Could, you could have kneeled yeah, it. Yeah, South I mean, Carolina's defense is standing around looking for you to kneel it, and you run a play instead. And they don't. They don't play defense at all. They're just like, all right, get in the end zone. Like I. I think Muschamp is a petty guy. He's also a crazy person. Yeah. I think that's going to be filed away in the old memory bank. Yeah, I mean, if he's ever at a position where he can run it up on on Clemson, he will do it. Or if he ever sees Dabo in, like, Walmart. (laughs) Like, he's crazy. He is a crazy person. We kind of both agree with that, right? I mean, they call him Coach Boom for a reason. I don't don't know that that's a bad thing. No. I I definitely don't want to cross ways with crazy people. No, not not in the slightest. I want to make friends with them all. Not in the slightest. <laughs> Good gracious. All not, right, that is close friends. that is going to wrap up our college football recap for week number 13. Don't forget all the best of the sports book in t- our sports books in Tunica, Tunica, Mississippi, over at tunicatravel.com. Go over to winningcureseverything.com, check out everything we got there, follow us on social media. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We'll be back with uh with more videos. Go check out the rest of the channel.